Good morning. I would like to thank the organizers of CNSD 2021 for giving me the opportunity to report, present a very recent work that we have done. It has been published only this year. You know, the sun is an enormous dynamical system right above our head, something that affects all our lives. And some recent observations indicated that some changes are taking place in the sun now. And so we decided to take a look from the dynamical system's point of view. And uh, in our institute, there is a center for excellence in space sciences, uh, SESI. Uh, and the, my collaborator, Dr. Dibyendu Nondi, is from SESI. He is a solar scientist. And Bindes Tripathi was a Nepali student who was working with us. So let's start. Essential point is, that is, the, the star like the sun spins around its axis. And because of the spin, and because it is not a solid body, there is magnetic field created. Now, this magnetic field produces solar flares and things like that, so that there is mass ejection. And that solar wind, as it is called, solar wind, the continuous stream of uh, charged particles that is coming out of the sun, they take away angular momentum. As a result of which, a star like the sun, its spin slows down, which is called spin down. Now, how does this spin down happen? If we could observe the sun for a long time, then we could know how does the spin down happen, what is the rate of spinning down. But since we cannot do that over a long time, so people studied sun-like stars. There are many stars whose mass and the volume are more or less like the sun of different ages. So they studied those stars. And they found that the older star, the older the star, uh, the slower it rotates, the younger the star, the faster it rotates. So that led to the conclusion there is a spin down and now we understand the reason for the spin down. It is the solar magnetic activity and the resulting uh, continuous stream of uh, gas that is coming out with angular momentum. But only four years back, uh, the paper was published in Nature uh, in which they reported that this breaking action magnetic breaking action in the stars uh, that apparently becomes ineffective around the middle of a star's age. How do we know that? Because uh, as a star ages due to its uh, solar wind, stellar wind, we expect it to spin down and there is the expected rate of the spinning down, but it is found, it was found that for the older stars, they are not spinning as slowly as would have been expected from the usual rate of spinning down. So they are spinning anomalously faster than what they should. Even they, though, though their spin rate is slower than the younger stars, but they are not slowed as much they should have if the same magnetic activity continued. So something must be happening around the middle of a star's life, which is called the stellar midlife crisis. Now, it so happens that the sun, our own sun, is right now in its middle age. It is about 4.6 billion years old and uh, it is about the same time left in its life before it becomes a red giant star. So more or less we know that it is now in the middle age. So it is natural to think that the, the issue that is observed by observing all the other sun-like stars, uh, that is there is something called a stellar midlife crisis 
that should be right now occurring in the sun. And only the last year, there was a paper published in Science uh, into 2020, uh, which said the sun is less active than other solar-like stars. So something is happening in the sun. Some change is happening in the sun. So we wanted to understand that from a dynamical systems perspective. Is the change a bifurcation? Another thing that was observed in the sun's activity was that the visible signature of sun's magnetic activity are the sunspots. And the sunspot number is something that has been observed since the time of Galileo. In fact, this happens to be the longest known time series obtained from uh, actual observation. Ever since Galileo, the number of sunspots have been continuously observed till now, uh, 400 years. And when we plot that curve, that means the time series, we found that we find that there is a periodic oscillation uh, about 11 year cycle. So, this is the usual sun cycle, the 11 year cycle, but there are such minima when there is practically no sunspots observed. There is another minima here when there were some sunspots, but not many. So, there are such oscillations in the sun's magnetic activity. The one oscillation is this 11 year cycle, but apart from that, there are some additional uh, low zones. But this is only over a 400 year time period, which is practically nothing compared to the sun's life. So, a stellar time scale is much longer. So, we need to have some uh, idea about what happens or are these minima a regular thing, something that happens periodically or something that happens randomly, we needed to understand that. And uh, one group did that using other markers of sun's magnetic activity, using isotopes and things like that. Uh, I will not go into the details of that, but what they reported was that that also sun's magnetic activity over the over about 10,000 years time have gone through the ups and downs. And noticeable is that these downs which are called the grand minima are completely random, they are unpredictable, it happens, but not in a predictable way. And the most uh, recent grand minima that happened within our observation time was the Maunder minima that happened from 1640 to 1666. For 26 years, there was very little solar activity. So, this sort of gives a signal that yes, something is happening in the sun, some change is happening in the sun. So, in order to understand that, let us try to understand how the magnetic fields are created and how do they change. Well, uh, in the sun at the center uh, due to thermonuclear reaction, energy is generated and the energy is transferred to the surface by two means, radiation and convection. And it so happens that in the core, convection cannot happen. So, the only mode of transport of energy is radiation. So, this is called the radiative core. And uh, this is for the our 70 percent of the radius, the remaining 30 percent has convection. So, this is called the convective zone. And all uh, solar magnetic activity happens in the convective zone. So, we will focus our attention on what happens in the convective zone. Now, it so happens that the sun is not a solid body and therefore, uh, it has differential rotation. The equator rotates faster, its time period is about 25 days and the uh, at a larger latitude, it slows down and around here, it is only it, it is about 35 days. So, obviously, the speed of rotation is slower here, speed of rotation is faster here and that has profound effect on the magnetic activity of the sun. 
Now, suppose there is a magnetic, there is a some amount of magnetic field here, it goes like this, some amount of magnetic field here. So, what will happen to that magnetic field because of this differential rotation? Uh, this field is called the poloidal field. So, what happens is, you see as this part is rotating faster, it stretches the magnetic lines of force and then some of them uh, emerge through the surface and when they emerge through the surface that is what creates the sun spots. So, the mechanism of creation of a toroidal field from the polaroidal field is that this, this is the differential rotation because of that there will, this will be you know bent like this and further there will be further bends at it as it rotates further and finally, it would have a structure like this and some of these will emerge through the surface as sunspots. So, this is the mechanism of creation of the toroidal field from the poloidal field, but then the toroidal field in turn has an impact on the poloidal field. How does that happen? That happens through the sunspots. So, these are the sunspots in which uh, there is a magnetic lines of force emerging from one and going into the other. So, one is the north pole, another is the south pole. So, effectively by looking at the sunspots or the solar flares, you can see how the li lines of force are going. And what has been observed is, so this is a, a sunspot and you can see the size of the sunspot is more or less the same as the size of the earth as big as that. So, the magnetic lines of force emerge through one and go into the other. So, there is a flux tube here and in this flux tube a convection becomes relatively inefficient due to which this part has a relatively lesser temperature than the rest. As you know the surface temperature of the sun is about 6000 degrees, while here it will be something like 4000, 4500 something like that. So, they, these appear as visible as sunspots. And since magnetic lines of force has to emerge and has to go in, therefore sunspots always appear in pairs. Now, uh, therefore, the sunspots actually signal the sun's magnetic activity. Now, one important observation was that the sunspot always appear in pairs, but there is a tilt, there is an angle and there is a tilt which is different in the north pole and in the south pole. In the north pole, it is like this and in the south pole it is like that. So, obviously opposite. Why is that? It is because of the same Coriolis force that causes the cyclones to spin one way in the north hemisphere and the another way in the southern hemisphere on earth is in the same uh, mechanism. But because of that, because there is a tilt in the in the sun, uh, sun spot uh, pair, what happens is the supposing there is a sunspot uh, pair like this created due to a plus minus uh, or north south orientation of the poloidal field that has created the toroidal field and toroidal field has come out of the surface with this orientation of the plus and minus because of the Coriolis force. Now, you notice that there is a component of that magnetic field in the in, in this direction and that is opposite to the reason for which it was created. It was earlier north south here, but this orientation is trying to oppose that uh, magnetic orientation. So, due to the appearance of these sun spots, the original magnetic field slowly weakens and finally, it reverses and this reversal has that 11 year cycle that we saw. So, to summarize, if there is a magnetic field, a polaridal magnetic field, a bipolar 
magnetic field. Then uh, due to the differential rotation of the sun, it will create a toroidal magnetic field. The toroidal magnetic field in some places will pierce the surface and it will come out. And by observing these piercings or the sunspot pairs, we notice that it has an orientation, it has a tilt and that tilt will create a magnetic field that will oppose the original magnetic field. So, each emergent sunspot weakens the existing polaroidal field and ultimately it reverses it. And that happens uh, more or less on 11 year cycle. So, this is called the babcock leighton mechanism of interaction between the polaroidal field and the toroidal field which explains this 11 year cycle which explains the creation of the magnetic field in the first place. So, this is what is accepted as the major dynamo mechanism in the sun. So, we try to, to model this mechanism in an effort to understand why there are minima and how the it recovers from a minima because we see that there are minima, but it does stay there, it recovers from there. So, we need to understand that is the dynamical phenomenon, dynamical uh, behavior. Now, there are models of the sun which are dependent on partial differential equation that means space as well as time is involved, but these models are enormously complicated, hugely computation intensive. And in order to understand the, the average behavior, we try to avoid that kind of modeling, we rather resorted to ODE modeling. So, instead of uh, spatially dependent magnetic fields, we chose the average uh, toroidal field and average polaroidal field as the thing to model. So, B phi is the average toroidal field and A is the vector potential related to the average polaroidal field. Now, if there is no toroidal field, these two terms will remain and as a result the, the, polar, the toroidal field will die down with a time scale of tau. And uh, so, there will be turbulent dissipation and because there will be a time scale of that. Similarly, A the vector potential related to the uh, poloidal field that will also decay in the absence of any toroidal field. But because these two terms are present, there is coupling between these two fields and that is what makes the whole dynamics happen. Now, the way the poloidal field will influence the toroidal field depends on the differential rotation and the rate of differential rotation is the difference in rotation rates omega across the solar convective zone and the length of the convective zone is say length L. So, the rate at which there is a differential rotation is omega by L, it would depend on omega by L. And here we have a relatively more complicated term here alpha is not a constant. Alpha is uh, embodying the way the toroidal field through the creation of the sunspots uh, is influencing the, the poloidal field and that is a very complicated mechanism and that is that has been shown to be dependent on this kind of a term by uh, Wilmot Smith. Uh, effectively, I can tell you that it, uh, it is a quenching uh, effect. When the toroidal field goes below a certain minimum, then sunspots can no longer happen and therefore, the, the mechanism of the influence of the toroidal field on the polaroidal field ceases to exist. Similarly, if the toroidal field is too strong, then the Coriolis force will not be able to tilt it and as a result its effect on the polaroidal field will be minimized. So, these two effects are embodied in this kind of a functional form. Notice that this is the only nonlinearity in the system. Okay. 
So we have a model. We have a model that is uh, that is obtained from the the overall phenomena that is taking place in the system without bothering about the microscopic difference in different places. Now this has uh, this model with this using this model you can easily obtain the fixed points and they happen to be 0 0 which signifies no magnetic activity and there is another a b term which signifies magnetic activity some value of the toroidal field some value of the polaroidal field uh, given by this but there is no oscillation if it is here it will stay there if it is here it will stay there and therefore it is not really a realistic model of the system. So we notice that there is another effect that we have to take into account. Here we are talking about the toroidal field influencing the polaroidal field and polaroidal field influencing the toroidal field. Now that influence cannot be instantaneous. If some changes change happens in the toroidal field, its effect will be felt on the polaroidal field sometime later. There will be a time taken by the for the flux transport and flux transport across the convective zone. So the flux will take some time to go across the convective zone and therefore we need to take those delays into account. So one delay is from the convective zone the interior of the convective zone to the exterior and another from the exterior to the convective zone to the interior and these two time scales are taken as T0 and T1 and these two delays will have to be included in the model. So when we talk about the influence of the poloidal field on the toroidal field there has to be delay of T0 and when there is a we talk about the influence of the toroidal field on the poloidal field there has to be a delay of T1. So now it is a delay differential equation and in the F1 term uh, that embodies the coefficient here there also this delay has to be included. So here is a model that we can use. Now when we use that and obtained a different a, a, a bifurcation diagram we got a bifurcation diagram like this. Now notice that as uh, okay the, the state of dynamo activity is given by a number called the dynamo number. The dynamo number is omega alpha b l tau square by l. So you do not need to understand all that point is that the if, if the dynamo activity is strong it is high if dynamo activity is uh, weak then it is low. So here is the dynamo active the dynamo number in the x axis and the amplitude of the toroidal force in this. Now for very low dynamo number there is no toroidal force, toroidal field. But at a bifurcation point suddenly two periodic orbits or two fixed points emerge. One is that 0, the other is with a dynamo activity and then as the dynamo number increases, so the, the, the dynamo activity also increases. In fact when a star is young then it is somewhere here which means it has a strong dynamo activity and then uh, the distance from that fixed point equilibrium point to the 0 0 equilibrium point is large and therefore it cannot uh, it does not normally come from here to here. So even though there is a hysteresis here it does not come. So normally it would stay along this line with a strong dynamic activity, strong solar wind and therefore reasonably fast dissipation of angular momentum. But as the angular momentum dissipates, the spins spin it, it spins down and therefore it goes the dynamic activity relatively becomes weaker and it goes along that line and finally it reaches somewhere close here. By looking at this our initial uh, guess was sun is somewhere here. But then still if you have this as the model then if it is here it will stay here, if it is here it will stay here, it will not 
go from here to here or here to here, but that is what we observe. So there has to be something in addition to it. Now we notice that we had missed something. In the convective zone, there is convection. The convection is not a regular convection. It is violent and a turbulent convection. And so there would be, uh, the flux would not be in a, if we move in a very streamlined way. There would be, you know, random perturbations in the flux tubes quite naturally. So if that has to be there, it has to be included in our model. So what we did was, this was the earlier model, we included an additional term epsilon, which is a stochastic perturbation. It is a zero mean white noise, which is added to the polar del field, uh, rate of change of the polar del field. So now, uh, you, with this term, we find that we do capture the effect of transition into a grand minima and exit from a grand minima. So what happens? Uh, when we simulated that over a long time, we found that the solar activity is varying with time and it is adequately captured. But if the B min, uh, B min was uh, included in the F term, if you recall, so the minimum value of the uh, of the toroidal field below which sunspots do not appear, if that is uh, assumed to be zero, then there is no grand minima. But if it is the, it has a value, then there is a grand minima. So grand minima can be captured this way. And what happens at a grand minimum is that the amplitude of the toroidal field goes below the threshold, due to which there is no magnetic buoyancy, there is no sunspots. And if there is no transport, the Babcock Layton polaroidal source switches off and if switches off, then there is a total magnetic catastrophe in the sun. There is no magnetic activity. So now we wanted to do a relatively detailed bifurcation analysis. So this was the bifurcation diagram initially. We zoom onto this part and see what happens. So this is the uh, no magnetic field behavior, the equilibrium point related to no magnetic activity and this is the equilibrium point related to the magnetic activity. And in between there is the unstable periodic orbit. So this is the yellow part is the basin of attraction of the attractor here. Now there is a, a particular level below which the, the Babcock Layton dynamo uh, mechanism shuts down and there is another level below which sunspot formation itself uh, stops. So if the toroidal field goes below this, then effectively the magnetic activity ceases. Now if initially the system is working somewhere here, because of the thermal noise present in the system, it can knock it to a place outside the basin of attraction. And when that happens, it might go into this dead zone. And that is exactly what happens here. So here is the oscillation of the 11 year oscillation shown and the peaks are shown here. Uh, and it is numbered depending on which 11th year we are talking about. And you will find that at this 80th cycle, it went below the dynamo th uh, shutdown threshold and therefore it simply shut down. But then because there is a thermal noise, there is a non-zero probability of it coming back, it oscillating and coming back above that and then within the basin of attraction and that is what actually happens here. So it was for a long, reasonably long time below this threshold and so there was the grand minimum. But after that, it again regained. So it is a successful recovery from that. So this model is able to capture both a transition to a grand minimum as well as a recovery from the grand minimum. So this is the, the, the beauty of this model that here we can successfully capture both the phenomena. The question then is, that is this model able to capture the actually observed behavior of the sun's magnetic activity. Now what is observed? That there are 
such grand minima, but at completely uh, unrelated and unpredictable uh, instance. And it has a certain uh, average rate of occurrence. Now, when we ran our model for a long time, 10,000 years, we found that we do have those regions of grand minima occurring at completely stochastic time times, uh, unpredictable random times. But when it happens, it stays for some time, exactly the way it actually is observed in nature. And if you, if you zoom only this part, 4,000 to 6,000 years, we find, found that it is uh, more or less showing the behavior as at least qualitatively be showing the behavior as observed and the rate at which this uh, grand minima occur. That rate can be tuned by tuning the strength of the noise that we put into the system. Another important observation was that if you see the uh, probability density function of the average rate of sunspot activity, then it has a bimodal distribution that is observed. It has a peak related to the regular activity and it has another peak related to the minimum activity. This is important, it is not like this. It is, it is a bimodal distribution and our model was able to mimic that bimodal distribution. This is the regular activity and this is the reduced activity during the minima. So, there is indication that our model is able to capture the actual behavior of the system. Now, we are uh, used to seeing things in the phase space. What happens in the phase space is while going in an orbit like this, it suddenly goes into a very small, it sort of collapses in the phase space into a small orbit and then again regains. So, here also it is so for different uh, parameters. So, uh, and if you draw it in the time domain, you see that this is the range of the grand minimum and then it is the again recovery. So, what do we conclude out of this? What we conclude is that as I said in the beginning, right above our head is the enormous dynamical system the sun. And the sun is a dynamical system that has direct influence on our lives, everything that we do. Therefore, it should be a matter of concern of the dynamicists. And it so happens, our, our, our study indicates, the sun is currently close to a bifurcation point. A bifurcation point in the solar magnetic activity, not the, uh, the uh, generation of energy and things like that is solar magnetic activity. And our uh, model shows that there are two equilibria that have now come reasonably close to each other, so that the ambient noise in the system is able to knock the system from one to the other at completely random intervals. But once one goes into the minima, then the same uh, thermal noise can uh, knock it back to the inside the basin of attraction, but that takes some time, quite a few years for the recovery to take place, but it does recover at the present time. But through this activity, the sun is still losing uh, rotational kinetic energy, angular momentum, slowing down. And as it slows down, the differential rotation will also slow down and therefore, the, the mechanism of creation of the toroidal field will also reduce and so it will slowly inch towards the bifurcation point and as it crosses the solar activity, solar magnetic activity will cease. It will become magnetically inactive. When that, that happens, the solar wind will no longer be able to carry away as much uh, angular momentum. So, the rate at which it is slowing down will slow down. So, it will still lose uh, rotational kinetic energy, but at a much slower rate. So, that is the phase that we are going to enter. But that has to be understood in a solar time scale. The sun has exist, exist, existed for 
to 4.6 uh, billion years, which means a million year is a blink for a solar time scale. So what I'm talking about may occur over a million years, so there's nothing to worry for us. But what our study has shown is that the sun is right now going through a bifurcation. Uh, this work has recently been published in mass monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society Letters in 2021. And uh, the Royal Astronomical Society has issued a press release uh, reporting this. This is the first time we have an explanation of the mysterious uh, stellar midlife crisis. So this is, these are the references of the past work that has ultimately led to this and with that, thank you.